It's been a wild week in the world of AI robotics with breakthrough after breakthrough. Boston Dynamics gave Atlas a brand new perception system so precise it can fix car parts mid chaos without blinking. Hugging Face dropped two open source bots, one full sized and motor packed, the other desk ready and dirt cheap all while swallowing up pollen robotics behind the scenes. In China, Robot Era's Star One cooked dumplings with chopsticks, and Honor, of all companies, just jumped headfirst into the humanoid race. Meanwhile, Apple quietly shifted its robot project into high gear. Saudi Arabia unleashed Monera 2 to guide pilgrims at Mecca using AI fatwas in 11 languages, and Poodoo's cleaning robot started inspecting its own brushware like it's got janitor instincts. Then came Boca Chica, where Elon Musk revealed Starship's insane next phase, a thousand rockets a year, reusable boosters on 60-minute cycles, and maybe even Optimus heading to Mars before any human does. Let's unpack the chaos. First stop, Boston Dynamics Atlas Lab. The engineers there just bolted a totally new perception stack onto their titanium parkour star, and the effect is almost like handing the robot a brand new set of eyes and a finely tuned inner ear. The two-dimensional layer labels everything in a scene, the floor, the racks, the oddly shaped brake calipers, so the robot knows what's what at a glance. Then the three-dimensional layer locks in a cloud of key points around each shelving unit, measuring inner and outer corners so precisely that Atlas always knows where the slot for part A sits, even if somebody nudges the whole shelf mid-task. That happened in the test video. While Atlas was shuttling car parts, a Boston Dynamics tech kept sliding the steel rack half a meter this way and that. The robot paused for a blink, recalculated its own pose relative to those key points, and kept working. Another tech dropped a heavy part behind Atlas. The microphones heard the clang but couldn't triangulate, so the vision system swung around, spotted the stray item, and the grippers scooped it up. All of this has to be tight because the shelf cells give only a five centimeter margin. If the wrist drifts by a single centimeter, the part jams. That's why the team built a thermal and impact calibration loop, so Atlas stays registered even when the metal frame expands at noon, shrinks at midnight, or takes a chest bump. They're calling the next frontier athletic intelligence, meaning they want every motion to look deliberate instead of cautious, and you can almost see the swagger creeping in already. Sliding over to the open source camp, Hugging Face just introduced two newcomers, Hope Jr. and Ricci Mini. Hope Jr. stands eye to eye with an adult and packs 66 actuated degrees of freedom. So from its neck all the way down to individual finger joints, each axis has its own motor. Co-founder Clem DeLang says the first few units should roll out by December, priced roughly $3,000 apiece, which is wild when you remember that an Atlas run costs north of a luxury SUV. Ricci Mini sits on a desk, rocks, a head swivel, speakers, and a mic, and acts as a physical playground for devs who want to deploy large language model agents in the real world. That one lands between 250 and 300 bucks, depending on tariffs. Hugging Face didn't pull this off alone. In April, they quietly absorbed Pollen Robotics, the crew famous for the original Ricci. That talent infusion plugs straight into the LayRobot platform they launched last year open weights, open data sets, and a brand new tranche of training data they collected with Yawk to help teach self-driving machines. They even refreshed their three-dimensional printed SO-101 robotic arm this spring alongside the robot studio. The company's pitch is simple. Hardware and software should stay as forkable as a Git repo, otherwise a handful of black box giants will own the future of embodied AI. China's hardware race absolutely backs that argument. At the Honor 400 phone launch two days ago, CEO Li Jun casually mentioned that Honor is jumping into humanoid robotics, riding on the $10 billion AI budget they unveiled back in March. That move mirrors its former parent, Huawei, which co-developed the Kuafu Humanoid, using the Pangu Foundation model, and already has Harmony operating system talking to assembly line robots at NIO. The local mood is bullish, during a robot half marathon in Beijing, Jensen Huang predicted that Chinese humanoids, especially in factories and warehouses, could morph into a trillion dollar sector. 
with thousands of startups chasing that prize, Honor clearly doesn't want to watch from the sidelines. Over at Robot Era, their humanoid robot Star One just made headlines by becoming the first of its kind to skillfully use chopsticks, not just to pick up objects, but to actually cook dumplings, steam buns, pour wine, and even clink glasses in a toast. This isn't just a gimmick, it's a powerful showcase of Star One's fine motor control, cultural contextual learning, and real-time sensory integration. Behind the scenes, Star One runs on an advanced AI native architecture with 55 degrees of freedom, high-speed joints reaching up to 25 radians per second, and a pair of 12 degrees of freedom dexterous hands packed with tactile sensors. It's equipped with a full suite of cameras, microphones, and touch arrays, allowing it to perceive and interact with its environment in ways that were unthinkable a few years ago. What makes this milestone more impressive is Robot Era's foundation model approach, enabling Star One to rapidly learn complex tasks end-end-end -end -end with minimal programming. In short, this robot isn't just mimicking humans, it's adapting like one, and that puts it in a whole new lead. On the other side of the Pacific, Apple's Robotics Lab, recently transplanted from the machine learning organization into the hardware division, put fresh muscle behind Project J595. Picture an iPad-sized screen on a compact base, except the base hides a single robotic arm that can pivot the display, gesture, maybe even wave for emphasis. Veteran executive Kevin Lynch now steers that crew, and insiders say the goal is to fuse an AI-driven personality with extra sensors so the gadget feels more alive than a static smart display. The simpler smart home hub, codenamed J490, keeps slipping because advanced Siri features keep missing internal milestones, so J595 has become the more daring test bed. German sources don't expect a cameo at Worldwide Developers Conference in June, and the hub itself may wait until 2026. But inside Apple, this bot just went from side quest to main quest, with John Turnus assigning a beefier engineering headcount. Switching gears to Saudi Arabia, the Grand Mosque in Mecca unveiled Manara version 2, just in time for the Hajj rush on June 4th. The white tower-shaped assistant cruises the marble on a four-wheel base with a smart stop system, chats in 11 languages, Arabic, English, Urdu, Bengali, Malay among them, and pulls from an AI database of verified fatwas. When a pilgrim fires off a question the model can't handle, the robot opens a live video link to a scholar. Its 21-inch touchscreen sits under a high-resolution camera pair and a directional mic, all piping data over a fifth-generation link. The chassis wears Islamic arabesque trim so it blends with the architecture, and the whole project slots neatly into Saudi Vision 2030. Earlier this year, the kingdom debuted Sarah, a humanoid that speaks Arabic and English with facial recognition, and for crowd management this Hodge, they're layering ground sensors, gate readers, and congestion spotting AIs to keep millions of worshippers moving smoothly. And back in purely commercial cleaning, Pudu Robotics just rolled out the CC1 Pro, their beefed up floor bot aimed at retail giants, hospitals, airports, and cavernous warehouses. Inside one chassis, it packs sweeping, scrubbing, vacuuming, and dust mopping modes, and an aft-facing AI camera constantly checks whether the floor still looks grimy. Mist spots light up on a heat map, and the robot doubles back automatically. Coverage per session runs from 5,000 to 8,000 square meters, which is a soccer pitch with plenty of extra sideline. The control stack recognizes surface types on the fly, uses deep scrubs for high traffic lanes, scales down to gentle dust mops in quieter corners, and tweaks suction to save battery. Visual simultaneous localization and mapping plus light detection and ranging means no ceiling markers, just map localize, dodge forklifts, and wandering toddlers in real time. Sensors also inspect brushware and squeegee alignment. If the bristles clog up, the robot alerts staff or triggers a rinse cycle rather than leave streaks. Optional self-cleaning rollers, beefy filters, and a flexing brush chamber handle uneven tiles, and International Electrotechnical Commission 63327 certification gives facilities managers a neatly stamped safety sheet. Now let's tackle the loudest announcement of the week down in Boca Chica. Elon Musk climbed onto a Starship presentation stage, or rather a scaffolding, in front of a gleaming booster and dropped numbers like confetti 
He wants the Starship line eventually spitting out a thousand vehicles per year. A launch starts with a super heavy booster that lofts the upper stage, flips, and touches back down on the launch mount roughly six minutes after liftoff. The ground crew hooks up propellant lines, pumps methane and oxygen for half an hour, stacks a fresh ship on top, and in theory, the booster could fly again inside 60 minutes. Future boosters will be taller with an expanded open strut interstage so the ship's exhaust vents cleanly during separation. Above that, the ship still needs an in-orbit tanker dance to top off for the Mars burn, and that demo, originally penciled for this year, has slipped into 2026, crucial for National Aeronautics and Space Administration's Artemis Lunar Lander variant as well. SpaceX also wants to catch the returning ship with tower arms maybe late this year if flight tests five or six behave under the skirt. Raptor 3 engines, 300 ground tests logged, lose the heavy base heat shield entirely, relying on the fact that any tiny leak just vents into existing plasma and burns away. Nine Raptors on a future ship version will hit the thrust and reliability targets for rapid reuse and clean prop transfer hookups. Then Musk tossed in the kicker, five Starship landers could head to Mars in 2026, and the first passenger may well be Tesla's Optimus humanoid, not a human astronaut. If that plan holds, Optimus becomes the trailblazer for every other bot we talked about today. So now I'm curious, do you actually think robots like Atlas or Star One will ever fully replace humans on the job? Or are we still decades away from that? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more insane updates from the AI and robotics world. And thanks for sticking around till the end. Catch you in the next one.